In March of 2000, a simple yet dangerous art stunt took place at the World Trade Center. A group of artists made a makeshift balcony and installed it outside the 91st floor of the tower. It's such a strange project to pull off that many don't believe it even happened. For those that do, they attach a very troubling legacy to it. Today we talk about the bee thing. Gelatin is a group of four Austrian artists from Vienna. The group is comprised of Wolfgang Gattner, Florian Reiter, Ali Janka, and Tobias Urban. You may know them for their 2005 art project in Italy, where they made a giant pink rabbit. The group had been making a name for themselves during the 90s through various art stunts in the US and UK. Unlike the giant rabbit, these were a bit more on the dangerous side such as a 1999 Los Angeles human elevator where a team would carry a person up a three-story building just through human strength. Anyways, seeing a growing art movement in New York City, the World Trade Center allowed aspiring artists to work in vacant rooms in the tower. Most people chose to create paintings or sculptures, but Gelatin had something riskier in mind, an idea that came to them as they stepped into the building. Putting a makeshift balcony on the 91st floor. Why and how did this happen? First off, getting to the 91st floor is quite the arduous task. You're gonna take one elevator to the 50th floor, then get off, and take another to the floor you want to get to. The whole process takes over 20 minutes and it can be pretty boring. These vacant rooms were also shared with other artists, meaning the space was rather cramped. Having a beautiful view of the city while also having limited space inside makes you kind of want to be outside. So that's exactly what they plan to do. Some aspects of the stunt were complicated, but it was surprisingly rather simple. For instance, the balcony itself was rather small, being able to contain only one person. It was also only being supported by one heavy bag of sand. And in the back, we have a little platform. Well, we put a box of sand on. You can see a harness here, so I'm sure there were other safety precautions taken, but it's funny to think only sand was holding them in this life and death scenario. You'll also notice a bunch of cardboard around them. This is because the group were trying to keep this whole thing a secret. They told the artists around them that they were meditating in this makeshift room. The obvious concern was that if the people around them found out, they would go get security. If you're wondering why security isn't already here, well it's because of what I mentioned earlier. One elevator takes you only up to the 50th floor. As a result, only those first 50 floors had strict security. All the way up on the 91st floor, things became a lot more lax. The most complicated part of the procedure had to be getting the window out. Not only was this illegal, but also dangerous. Like, really dangerous. If they weren't careful, they could potentially kill quite a few people below. It took about three weeks to figure it out, but they soon realized the window was kind of like a car windshield. They first had to remove the molding, then they used vacuum suction cups to remove it cleanly. And voila, an open window to install balconies to their heart's content. However, we run into an issue here about this whole stunt. Despite there being a few witnesses to the event, there's no direct documentation of them standing on the balcony. There's just this one grainy photo taken from a helicopter. But wait, how did they get a helicopter? Well, it wasn't Gelatin who got it. It was their gallerist who sought the help of a familiar face on this channel, Josh Harris. Josh Harris is someone I've covered on this channel before. For those out of the loop, he was an eccentric online millionaire known for making weird art projects. Looking at his timeline, this event takes place after his dystopian underground society project and before his destructive 24-7 live streams. So yeah, helping finance a project like this was definitely up his alley. Josh had actually been hosting a party over at the Millennium Hilton. At dawn, he and several other people took cameras and boarded a helicopter over to the towers and snapped this picture. The only picture that vaguely shows one of the members on the balcony. Josh's participation was small, but would prove to be important in verifying if this event happened. 
Once everything was said and done, Gelatin and their gallerists were consistently denied the stunt actually happened. Obviously the stunt was illegal, but it also may have been an effort to promote their book, which documented the whole thing. Now I know I got someone to rent Penis 1965 for 100 bucks, but this book costs well over a thousand dollars, so I don't think that's happening. Unlike the other members, Josh boasted about the stunt initially. While others were trying to suppress any reporting, Josh was willing to provide his own receipts. Still though, the situation is rather murky. Photo analysts have concluded that the photo is genuine. On the other hand, no arrest was ever made for taking out the window. Regardless of if you believe it or not, the stunt had quite the impact and received widespread attention. It was either an elaborate hoax or an art project that pushed the boundaries of what could be done. At its height, you'd be hard pressed to think of an event here that could overshadow it. September 11th, 2001. You will remember this day as long as you live. In September of 2001, America witnessed one of the most devastating attacks in its history. To say this stunt aged poorly would be an understatement. The group had inadvertently found itself at the center of a wild conspiracy theory. Although the attack had happened over a year after the stunt, it was actually fresh in the public's memory. This is because the group was promoting the stunt and their new book in a New York Times article, mere weeks before the attack. To make matters worse, their gallery, documenting the stunt, opened on that very day. The attack would unfortunately increase prejudice against foreigners. Many to this day accuse these men of being Israeli art students slash spies, when in fact they're Austrian. Gelatin weren't the only group accused of being involved with the attacks. The E-Team pulled off a stunt where their name was shown on the tower. Conspiracy nuts accused them of planting explosives on these floors. An idea that becomes stupid when you realize they just ask people to leave their lights on. There's also this hollow tower theory which implies the group were cracking open the rooms from the inside, evident by the ceiling here. However, that's just how the rooms were built. You can see it in photos taken by other artists, ones who have no connection to gelatin at all. There's a rabbit hole of theories connected to this tragedy, but I think I've given these nut jobs enough attention for now. Though I'll probably see them in my comments just like when I said the moon landing was real. Yeah, come at me bitch, I ain't scared. Funnily enough, Josh Harris may have actually been affected by these theories. Not only does he claim the balcony stunt never happened, but also that he wasn't involved. Dude is actually paranoid the FBI is investigating him. Although I didn't expect him to really have rational thoughts. At the end of the day, the stunt would fade into obscurity from the general public for obvious reasons. Gelatin continues to make art projects to this day, relatively unaffected by conspiracy allegations. Josh on the other hand kind of fucked up his life, but that was mainly his own doing. So what did we learn from all this? Well, last episode I said you should do any creative project you've been thinking of doing. I'm going to correct that a bit. If that project is as dangerous as this, then maybe don't. Try picking up drawing instead. 